This properties video is going to be uh, probably pretty short. Uh, optical properties, we just kind of really skim the surface, talk about some of them. We don't get into a whole lot of theory behind them. Optical properties would also be what some would consider light properties, properties of light, such as if you look at something and you describe it, what types of things could you say about it? It's re reflective, it's translucent, opaque, transparent, it's shiny, uh, it's luminescent, fluorescent. Those types of things are optical properties. There's things that you can see. Now there's some light that we can't see with our eyes. Those are still optical properties. We just don't see them with our eyes. We have to see them with a... Uh, with some other instrumentation or uh, they, they exist whether we can see them or not. <clears throat> so real quick, light is an energy and we have some equations here for uh, the energy of light. Um, and what it is is we ha it has different frequencies. And so we have our frequencies here and we can start off with our low energy side such as our radio waves and we move through we go to infrared, then we go to our um, our visible spectrum, Roy G. Biv. Uh, we get into our ultraviolet X-ray. We can. There are other ones in here. These are just some of the main ones. And as we get further over to the right here, we get into higher energy. I'm just going to kind of draw what this looks like. Uh, as we go from low energy to high energy, we start off at uh, a long wavelength, and then high energy gets really, really small. That long wavelength, it gets shorter. Something kind of like that. This is obviously not to scale. Radio waves get way, way bigger than uh, a computer screen. Uh, our visible is pretty small, and our x rays and ultraviolet are, are teeny tiny. So we're going to come back to, to discuss some of the things that are happening here. We're going to come back to uh, what we did with our electrical properties, with uh, conductors and insulators or uh, semiconductors. And so the picture that we have here for our conductor, remember, is we had our valence band and we have a conduction band. This valence band is completely full of electrons. Our insulator or our semiconductor, they have similar pictures. We have our valence band, which is full of electrons. And we have our conduction band, which is empty, but there is some band gap here. Some energy that we have to overcome to be able to get an electron promoted. With our conductor, there is no gap. It's very easy to get an electron to move up. So what happens here is when I have a photon come in, what's going to happen with each one? Uh, with a conductor, what's going to happen is this photon can easily be absorbed because there are many possible states uh, that the photon could be in. And there's many possible states which it uh, my conductor could could absorb from. It can absorb a large range, either a small energy or a large energy. And it's independent of wavelength. So my wavelength could be something really big, could be something really small. And what do we notice happens with uh, most things that we consider electrical conductors? They are opaque. You can't see through them. And the reason you can't see through them is because the photon cannot make it through the material because it gets absorbed very easily. And then some electrons might get promoted up here. But what happens is very, very easily, this photon gets absorbed by the material. In some cases, it could also reflect as well. Uh, for the case of an insulator or a semiconductor, a photon comes in, but photons have different wavelengths depending on their energy. Uh, there might not be enough energy to promote an electron, so let's say that there is only this much energy that the photon's bringing. There isn't enough energy to uh, have it interact with the electrons to promote an electron into that conduction band. So what happens with the photon? It just moves right through, doesn't interact with it really at all. And we'll get to that maybe, maybe in just a second. 
Uh, but what it does is it, it doesn't interact with it. There is no promotion. And in this case, we get um, a transparent material. I can see through it. Why can I see through it? Because the photon, which again is light, it's the things that we see, can make it through the material. And the reason it makes it through it is because of this band gap here. The band gap uh, is allowing through visible light. Now, there are some cases where um, we can see through a window, but in different spectrums, let's say in the infrared, it actually, uh, the photon can't make it through. And so if we were looking in infrared, a window would actually be completely opaque. We couldn't see through that. And so it does a lot depend on the energy, but we really use the term transparent normally when we're talking about visual, because that's what we can see. Uh, so in short, if a photon gets absorbed, then there is no light. Uh, light that passes through it, I should say. The light cannot pass through. So there's a couple things that I want to touch on here. The first one is refraction. Refraction, uh, we've all heard about it in physics. Uh, it's when light travels through a fluid or material, it experiences an apparent decrease in velocity, which causes a bend in the path of light. So it looks like... Uh, the light bends, and that's the the famous. You have a glass of water, you stick a pencil in it, uh, and you it looks like the pencil is offset a little bit, and that's refraction. There are a lot of theories floating around about how that happens. Some of those are that the the photon gets scattered and it kind of bounces around, kind of like a pinball, um, trying to make it through the lattice, and so that's why it slows down. That is not the case. Uh, some people say that what happens is the um, atoms will absorb the photon for a second, and then it will re-emit the photon. That, again, is not the case. Uh, we can have easy explanations for why this isn't the case. Maybe we'll talk about those in class if people are interested. So what actually is happening, what causes it to uh, appear to slow down? There's actually a lot of things about this. It's very, very uh, complicated stuff. Uh, in short, if I were to say this as simple as possible, the material, the atoms, uh, when they're all bonded together, there is uh, this huge electronic field throughout the entire material because they're bonded together with electrons. Uh, this is what causes something like the band gaps and the bands. It is all of these, uh, you know, trillions and trillions, quadrillions and you know, as many atoms as you can think of that make up a material, they make these bands. And these bands are made, are bonded together with electrons. And because of that, there is an electronic field, an electric field in my material. So my material has this electric field. And when this light comes through, it also has an electric field associated with it. And what happens is as this uh, electric field in light in my light beam, my ray that comes through, it actually starts to interact with the electric field of the material. And that interaction causes it to slow. Uh, I do have the index of refraction equation here. We're not gonna be using it. Uh, I just figured since we were talking about it, I should put it up. Um, again, if we wanna talk a little bit more about why this happens, we can do that in class, but uh, we want to try to keep this pretty simple. Uh, we just, most of you have probably only gotten through uh, the first year of physics, and a lot of this stuff gets into quantum mechanics and, and larger things. So we're going to keep it pretty simple. There's reflection. Reflection is light that is scattered at a medium interface uh, where light cannot pass into a material, so it's sent back into the original. Uh, the wording on there is a little odd, I guess. I was just kind of typing it up. Uh, what happens is light, a ray is coming in, it hits a material, it's not allowed to penetrate, and so some of it bounces back. Uh, we have a couple different types. We have diffuse reflection. This is where the uh, reflected ray is scattered in multiple directions. You get this picture. Normally you have uh, rough surfaces that do this. It's actually the most common type um, of reflection, I could have a light ray that comes in 
And when it bounces back out, it bounces off in multiple directions. That's what we see in nature for the most part. Uh, the other type is specular refraction, uh, reflection. Uh, this is the reflected rays that are scattered with the same incident angle. It's basically uh, when you have a mirror. These are not found in nature. You have to really polish a really smooth surface. This surface also has to have other properties. But I have this incident ray that comes in and the ray that comes out is the same and so that's what happens with the reflection a bunch of photons come in at one angle i stand kind of uh over here there i am and what i see is i see whatever was over here because all of those photons that came off of this object are bouncing directly into my eyes uh, in this case up here some of them bounce to my eyes, but they're also going to bounce to other people's eyes, and they bounce all over the place, uh, spreading out everything. And so these really do depend on the surface smoothness uh, and how many and what wavelengths are absorbed. Getting into that, what is absorption? Absorption, uh, the electrons of the atoms will absorb photons of specific wavelengths. We see the wavelengths that are reflected back and that again comes back up to this picture uh, there are some wavelengths that will be absorbed depending on uh, if it's able to absorb that energy or not that photon uh, and in some cases there are going to be some wavelengths that get bounced back and that's why we see certain colors so whatever is reflected back is what we see so some interesting examples, and I'm not going to get into these, but these are things that we can think about, things that we can talk about, things that we can research a little bit more. Some interesting things that we could look at about optical materials are we could look into LEDs. Those are uh, semiconductors that we can pass a, um, that we pass a voltage through. We got photovoltaic cells, very, very similar, but the opposite happens instead of uh, a light coming off of it when you pass a current, we can shine a light and we get a current. We can look at fiber optics and see how photons travel through these fiber optic cables. Uh, I like talking about the Nobel Prize in Physics in 2014. It was uh, an important enough thing that somebody got the Nobel Prize or a group of people got the Nobel Prize for. And really it was just for discovering a efficient and bright um, material uh, I shouldn't say the material is bright, but an efficient material that can be used as a bright and a, uh, a very, very good blue LED. And that is something that was very, very important. Not was, it is very, very important to our modern society. Uh, one of those we can see kind of right here, blue rays. But then kind of talking about how the uh, storage of optical drives work, such as what's the difference between CDs, DVDs, and Blu-rays, and how those uh, save data, how they read it, and why CDs hold so little compared to something like Blu-rays.